Okay, so welcome everyone. Welcome to the uh, CVCIM 101 webinar. Um, my name is uh, Virginie Ganivade. I'm with uh, CVDesk. CVDesk is a CVCIM service provider and we are located in Denver, Colorado. And thank you for joining us this afternoon. And as I said earlier, um, I will be happy to answer any questions and uh, please, uh, uh, because I mute everybody for the recording purposes, you can enter your questions in the, by clicking on the Q&A icon. Okay. So why uh, why CVCIM? So um, today we're going to talk about uh, CVCIM, uh, about the community behind CVCIM, and about, of course, all the features and why this CVCIM is a wonderful system for nonprofit organization. So the question today is, and why uh, nonprofit organization are decided to uh, to start using CVCM is uh, what exactly uh, my data leave. So this is most of the time, and that's uh, what we are uh, experiencing with nonprofits starting uh, with CVCM is the data uh, they have live in different database. So. Uh, for example, you have, of course, in the core of your data system, you have your, your website in the middle, but then you have your contacts that are spread up in different databases. So it can be, and it happens a lot of time in Excel, just Excel file. So you have spreadsheets of contacts and email and phone number that live in your Excel spreadsheets. And then you have data in your Outlook. So each staff member of your organization has its own Outlook address book. And then you have a list of uh, contacts there, an email and phone number. Or if your organization is using Google Apps, you have also a bunch of contacts and information related to this contact in another database that uh, lives with Google Apps. And then if your organization are managing members, you might, need, might use another system uh, to manage your members that are completely separate from uh, your contacts that live in Outlook or Excel. And then if you are managing event and you are taking registration for your event, then you might use another, another external application that's going to uh, content to store all the event participant information and that's completely also separate for the other database. And then you can have an emailing marketing application such as Constant Contact or MailChimp. And then you have a payment processor. So PayPal is an example. In your PayPal processor, you have also a database with contacts, names, emails, and also amount of payment that they made to your organization and date of this payment. So all these data live in different databases. They are all spread up. And the issue that you are facing is that all these data are not connected to each other. They live separately. So for example, you have, uh, you don't know, you have no idea uh, if your members are coming to your events because they don't live in the same database as your event participant. You, you don't know the connection between your event participant and your members. So that's why you need uh, to go with a unique database, integrated database, and CVCM is the answer. So with CVCM, all your data are going to live in one place. So CVCRM is going to become the, the core of your data information system. So in the middle. In CVCRM, you're going to store 
your contacts, what we call also constituents. So these contacts can be individual contacts, they can be organization, and they can be also household. And all these contacts are going to be connected to each other using relationship. So this database is going to become in the center of your organization. Then, with these contacts, you're going to have additional data that's going to be related to this contact that's going to be stored as well in the same database. So beyond the relationship, you're going to have uh, membership information. So these contacts can be also members. So you're going to be able to store membership levels, membership dates, membership status, and you will be able to track all this membership information. In the same database also, you're going to store related to this contact some information about the participation of this contact to your events. And so also, so you will know if this contact has attended your events, which events, and you will be able, of course, be able to invite them to come to your coming events using the emailing capability of CVCM. You will have contributions. So contributions are, can be donations, can be sponsorships. So all this information will be stored and attached to your contact. So you will have a holistic record of your contact and all a piece of data attached to this contact. So you will also have the activities. So activities are interactions that the contacts have you, with your organization. You will have also grants information or case management information and so on. So we're going to, through the, this, through the webinar, we're going to go through all the capabilities and features of CDCM in, more, in details. So this database, this uh, contact database and that database is going to be available and integrated into a website uh, using a CMS, Content Management System. And CVCIM today is integrated in three, uh, three CMS, major CMS. So Drupal, WordPress, um, and Joomla. So what does it mean, integration? It means that, first of all, CVCRM is going to be a, a plugin or module or extension of your uh, CMS. So in Drupal, we're going to talk about module. In WordPress, we're talking about plugin. And in Joomla, we're talking about extension. So you're going to access the back end of CVCRM through your website, through using the administration menu of your website. So when you install CVCRM in Drupal, for example, then you have uh, in the administration menu of the back end of your Drupal website, you have an additional uh, option that's going to be CVCRM. So same for WordPress and Joomla. And then, all what's going on on for on the front end on your, of your website? Then you will be able, your constituents will be able to have access to what we call public pages, and these pages are going to be built with CVCRM, but will be available on your uh, public website with the current theme of your website. So that's one aspect of the integration. So when we talk about public pages, we think about, uh, for example, a membership sign-up page, or an event registration page, or a subscription page to your mailing list. So this is what we name public pages. So these pages are, will be available on your website, and your contacts, members, and constituents will be able to uh, complete these pages, uh, complete forms that will are available on these pages. And all the data that's going to be entered in the form will be saved and recorded into your CVCRM database. So that's also uh, part of the integration. 
also the uh, part of the integration will be the synchronization between your uh, user account that you have in your website, such as in Drupal, you're going to have a, uh, your Drupal user, your members can have a Drupal account, and there is a, an automatic synchronization of this Drupal user account that's going to become an actual contact in CVCI. So the integration with this free CMSR is very strong, and uh, and so that you will be able to uh, benefit of both of the system in one time. Okay, so before we go to the, in the details of the different functionalities of uh, CV, uh, CVCRM, we're going to talk about what is CVCRM. So CVCRM started in 2004 and it's been, uh, developed exclusively for non-profit and other civic sector organization. And because of that, we, we say that the R, which, uh, the C, sorry, of the CRM is more so constituents rather than customers, or that's being used by uh, other commercial CRM. So CVCRM is a constituent relationship management software. So, who are the, the is using the users of CVCRM are non-profit organization, different size, uh, different sector, different mission, and also civic sector organization like polit also political organization, political parties or club association, chambers of commerce. So there is a large diversity of non-profit organizations that are using CVCIM. So CVCIM, first of all, if we can say what is the first uh, attribute of CVCIM is, we will say open source. So CVCIM is an open source software. You can download CVCRM directly from cvcrm.org website, and there is no uh, fee for the license. And open source means as well that the code is open, is public, and so it can be used by uh, uh, any end user organization or web developer or implementer to uh, uh, and to uh, add more features or we, to fix some issues and also to integrate with other system. So CVCIM benefit of API. So these API are public and free and these, you can use this API to add some new development to the core software of CVCIM. So it can be, for example, integration with an external application, or it can be adding new features to the core of the system. And, and so these, um, these APIs are used by uh, the members of the community. So there is a strong community behind CVCRM. And this community, are, who are part of this community, uh, beyond, of course, the core team, uh, we have all the non-profit uh, end users. So the end users of non-profit are part of this community. And also you have implementers, web developers, service providers. So these are examples of who are, belong to the community. But this community is strong and very welcoming. So anybody is welcome and you are always feel home in this community. So it's a very enjoyable uh, uh, community to be part of. And um, also, so what does it mean, this strong community? It means that you are going to have a lot of contributors, and these contributors, they can contribute different levels. Some are going to contribute with uh, adding some code or fixing code, that's what we call the code commits. Some of the community members are going to contribute by developing 
uh, extensions. So there is more than 500 extensions that have been developed. And um, so these extensions are also available to, to you on cvcn.org website. And there is a directory of all the extensions. And you can search by topic. And some are specific to a particular CMS. And some are completely independent of CMS. These extensions can add a new capability, a new functionality to the core of CVCM. Or these extensions are also used when you want to in, uh, use a CVCIM with another uh, uh, system or application. So an example will be the synchronization with uh, MailChimp, for example, the uh, emailing marketing software. And the community also uh, participate in the newsletter. They, we have more than 8,000 newsletter recipients as of today. I mean, that's the last statistic. Uh, I have, but maybe we have more now. OK, so going back to CVCIM, uh, CVCIM is highly customizable. And most of the customization can be done through the user interface without any programming. So CVCIM is very open, and you can add uh, custom fields, you can change the look of your um, uh, menus, you can add uh, forms, you can, uh, there is a many, many ways to uh, customize your CVCM and without uh, any knowledge in coding. But sometimes, of course, uh, when you have a specific need that it's not available out of the box with CVCM, we, you might need uh, programming, and it's possible as well. And using the uh, API in, in, of CVCIM, you can uh, program some additional features. CVCIM is web-based, so that's, uh, of course, that's uh, the fact that you can use CVCIM anywhere when you are. You just need a, a web browser and internet connection. And CVCIM is not, is everywhere in the world. So we have more than 9,700 inst active installation in the world. So that means that CVCIM is not only used in the in English language, but also in many different languages. So CVCIM has been translated in more than 20 languages. Including, uh, beyond, uh, including French and Spanish and German, Hungarian, and more. So uh, these uh, the translations, that means that you're going to be able to use CVCIM uh, in a different language. So what does it mean? It's not only using the back end of CVCIM in a different language. So this Backend is used by uh, your staff members who don't necessarily speak English when you are in another country. But also, that means that these uh, CVCIM public pages can be also uh, available on your website in different languages. And that's the power of the multi-language uh, capability of CVCIM. And so, for example, you are you building a membership sign-up page in the back end of your CVCIM, and it can be in two different languages. But the multi-language means that it's not, it doesn't mean that you have to build two separate pages, one in English, for example, and another one in French. That means that you are going to build one unique sign-up page. And this same page will be available in the two different languages. So that makes a huge difference because you're not going to have to uh, build several pages one by language. We are actually working with a nonprofit organization, and they are uh, all over the world, and they are using more than 10 different languages. And they need their public pages to be in their 10 different languages. So they're not going to create 10 different membership sign-up pages going to be a lot of work. And each time you're changing something in the page, that means that you will have to change this in, 
10 times. So that's the power and the beauty of the multilingual setting of CVCM. It's that you have one page and you just have to change the translation of the page in each language. Okay, so as I said earlier, there is a strong community uh, around CVCM. So what is this community? First of all, we start with the core team members. The core team members, there is 10 people, they are located in three different continents, so United States, uh, Europe, and India. So, and then around this core team, you have uh, more than 60 partners. So partners can be uh, service providers, implementers, web developers, and they provide services on CVCIM or they're providing new uh, extensions on CVCIM. But there is also technology partners. Uh, such as uh, PayPal is a uh, payment processor, is technology partner of CVCIM. And then this community is very active, not only uh, through internet, but also lively with events. And so you have many opportunities to meet other uh, end users, to meet our partners, to meet the core team members. And so there is uh, major uh, conferences, uh, what we name Silicon. And so Silicon is an annual conference. We have one in, uh, happening in the United States, and we have uh, two in Europe, one in London, and, and recently uh, another one was added in Amsterdam. Uh, for, these, for the attendees of the webinar who are located in Europe, I really encourage you to attend uh, Civicon London. That's going to be on the 8th and 9th of October, so very soon, in less than a couple of months. And, um, and the Civicon uh, US will usually happen in spring, uh, around end of April or early May. So last year, we were happy to have Silicon come to Denver, and so we'll be announced shortly the location for the 2016 Silicon Conference. So really encouraged to attend. It's wonderful uh, opportunities to meet with everybody, very casual and very open, open uh, event. Usually it's two days, and you have a lot. It's also a lot of uh, opportunities to learn about CVCIM. So there is a lot of sessions um, about CVCIM. More are some are more user oriented, other one are more developer oriented and they are all presented, mostly presented by community members. There is also user summit. Uh, in the US, there is a user summit located, that's going to happen in Washington, DC, and it's going to be on the 24th and the 25th of September. This, so very in, uh, in about one month. And I'm really encouraged to uh, register to this uh, user summit to attend. You're going to, uh, um, to also receive a lot of education about CVCM, and you're going to meet a lot of other users. Also, if you uh, check on cvcm.org, you will also find out opportunities of trainings. Uh, you can find on-site trainings or online trainings and on CVCIM, so a lot of options to learn more about in details about uh, CVCIM. Uh, local meetups, so all over the world, uh, meetups are organized by members of the community, and it's uh, usually uh, different format of meetups, some are in the evening, some are in the morning, so check your local meetups in your area. And one of the biggest meetups that's happening every year is uh, City Day. And City Day is uh, one day, you, it's uh, a meetup that's happening on a specific day all over the world. So last year, I think more than 30 cities hosted a city day somewhere in the world. 
And so same, it can be a couple of hours, it can be a whole day session, it depends, uh, of course, on your uh, local, um, the local organization that's putting together the CV day. Uh, 2016 CV Day will be uh, on February 24th, I think correct, so save the date and I'm sure that your local uh, CV Day organizer will be in touch with you regarding this. Then the question is how you going to, how you can contribute to this community. Uh, you d so of course for v those who are more uh, are more developers or te technical people, they will be able to um, to uh, uh, organize uh, uh, to participate. I mean, sorry, with writing new features or extension or submit code fix. But you don't need to be a technical or programmer to participate to the community. There is different many ways to, to, to participate. So you can either uh, update the manual, you, the documentation, or you can post an article on the blog about uh, your experience with CVCM. So that's what we call the case study. Or you can organize a local meetup, or if you are mastering a, another language, or if you're a native speaker in another language, you can participate in the translation of CVCM. So there is many, many ways to participate in the, in the, in the community and to contribute. Uh, you can also report bugs, uh, and so that's always an uh, important part, so we can be aware about uh, who needs to be fixed. And finally, I'd like to also mention that uh, you can bring some financial support to a CVCN project. There is different ways to do it. Uh, you can become a member. And so there is many benefits of becoming a, a member. And you can browse these uh, membership benefits on cvcn.org website. And you can also, if you are looking at a specific feature that's not yet available into CVCM, you can also contribute to what we call a make it happen. And so the, the core team will be able to uh, develop this uh, new uh, feature. Or, or more eventually, more simpler, you can just uh, donate to, uh, to the project so, make sure, so that CVCM uh, can continue its mission. Okay, these are examples of uh, organizations that are currently using CDCM. And so this slide is like to show you that uh, CDCM is used by many different organizations. Some are very large, for example, the Doctor Without Borders, and, but some are very small. So we are working, uh, as CVDES, we're working with very small organizations that are also using CVCI. So there is not a, a profile for, oh, I'm a good, I'm going to be the perfect um, uh, profile for using CVCM. Every organization, every nonprofit can use CVCM because you have all the, com most of the co common needs. Also, there is no particular mission of which type of nonprofit is going to use CVCM. Okay, so this is some statistics that uh, show you, for example, who are adopted CVCM based on the budget. And so you can see that uh, we have a diversity in, ter in terms of budget of nonprofit using CVCM and also by sector. So that's a very interesting, uh, I think, pie chart that with all the colors and one color by uh, mission, by sector of the nonprofit. So you can see that it's a very multicolored pie chart. Everybody can use CVCM. Okay, so now we're going to talk about what you can do with CVCM. This is, this slide is uh, going to is a summary of what you can do with CVCIM, but uh, there is more. We're not going to talk about everything, otherwise we can stay here for three hours. 
that uh, this is, uh, say, a good uh, start about what the features are for with CDCM. And so we're going to talk about each of these. So we're going to start with contact management or constituent management. That's the core of CVCIM, of course. So as I said earlier, with CVCIM, you're going to be able to build a holistic record of each of your contacts. So a contact can be, as I said earlier, an individual, an organization, a household. You have also the option to create subcontact type. And so, for example, a student can be a subcontact type of the individual contact type if you want to be more specific and if you want to track some specific data that are related to students. And you're going to be able to manage relationship between these contacts. So an example of relationship can be employee of, employer of. Uh, or it can be parent of, if a uh, member of the household. So these are available relationships that are coming out of the box when you install CVCM. But then you can add your own relationship type that are specific to your organization without any programming, just from the uh, back-end user interface of CV. Then you will be able to segment your, your database, your contacts. And that's uh, one of the main uh, usage of uh, the CVCI of the database is to be able to organize your contact based on your own criteria. So there is different tools to say manage your contact. We can use groups, we can use tags, we can use custom fields, and you can decide if you want to organize your contact based on a geographical location, demography, uh, amount of donation, so that you can go across the um, across the different features of CVCIM and to organize and then segment your uh, database and then uh, define your communication uh, based on this segmentation. You can also uh, create your own custom fields. So that's part of the customization, and there is no need of programming, just going through the user interface, the back end. And so you can define your custom fields specific to your needs. And so this custom field will be used to track data about your constituents. It can be used for your volunteers, your donors, uh, your members. Uh, your subscribers to your newsletter, all these constituents, you will be able to track data about them and specific data. And then your database is going to grow. It's going to grow through, uh, of course, manual entry. So you're going to enter new contacts from the back end. But also you will be able to uh, have new contacts coming into your database through the online forms. Uh, so, such as a membership sign-up page or a subscription to your newsletter page. So these, when, as I said earlier, when you enter, when someone is going to complete this page and this form, the contact will be saved in the database. So your database is going to grow. Each time someone is going to register to an event, it's going to be a new contact in your database. Then we have, with the contacts, we can manage uh, activities. So what do we mean by activities? We mean that it's all the interactions that your contacts have with your organization. So these activities will be able to be tracked. Uh, so you can find out, for example, uh, who are, who are uh, all the um, uh, contacts that have, you have met the last the past month. So you have what we call the building uh, activities, but you can also create your own activity type. So out of the box, you have option to create phone call activities, meeting activities. So these are going to be the activities that you're going to record and attach to a specific contact. So, for example, you're going to uh, start a sponsorship campaign for your, next, your upcoming gala. You're going to need to uh, outreach to your uh, uh, 
potential sponsors. You're going to make some phone call, you're going to set up some meetings, and you like to record all these activities so your colleagues are going to be aware about the conversation that you had with these potential sponsors. So all the details of the conversation can be also saved in the database and so shared with your colleagues. Uh, if you want to be more specific uh, with a particular activity type, you can, for example, create an activity type, say, sponsorship record, recruit. And so it's, uh, then you can record this activity as well and be more specific, and then you can do search on these activities. Also, a lot of activities are going to be automatically logged by the system itself. So, for example, when a, a new member is going to sign up, it's going to be a new going to be saved as a new activity in the system. Or when you're sending an email from the CVCIM to a contact, it's going to be also recorded as an activity. And then you can assign an activity to another user of CVCIM. So. Let's say that you are working on your sponsorship campaign and you need one of your colleagues to, uh, to uh, follow up with a phone call. You can assign this activity phone call to one of your colleagues. Membership. Membership, so it's going to be, uh, it's very, membership management module is a very robust and solid uh, module of CVCN. You are able to track and organize your members. You will be able also to retain your members more effectively by setting up some automatic uh, renewal reminders email. So you can set up this email to be sent out automatically by CVCIM on a specific date or, for example, uh, 30 days before the membership end date. You will be able also to collect membership dues. So this membership dues will be collected either in a back end and if you are in, if your CVCM is integrated with a payment processor, uh, you will be able also to process the credit card uh, through the pay, from the back end of CVCM. So the payment will be recorded and the status of the payment will be also recorded in CV if the transaction has been complete or failed. As I said, you can set up membership renewal. So to, um, so it's automatic. You don't have to worry about oh, I need to contact these members because the expansion that is happening in one month. They will automatically receive this email, and in the email we encourage you to include link to uh, renewal pages. And then you will be able to also customize your own sign-up pages and renewal pages that will be available on your on your front end of your website. And it's always a good uh, opportunity also to collect data about your members. So you can customize these pages, add it a custom field, and so you can uh, collect data and specific data that makes sense for your organization. Uh, the membership there is, uh, will be the status of membership will be automatically managed by the system as well based on rules that you're going to define. So that's part of the customization of CDCN. You can define your own rules to know uh, when a member is considered as new, for how long, when a member is going to be uh, current, and so on. So this is what uh, rules that you can configure. Event, event management, you can, uh, as I said earlier, in one database, you will have your contact, your members, and your event participant. So you're going to be able to track registrations and payment to your paid event. Same payment will be uh, collected with, um, uh, with the help of payment pro online payment processor that's been integrated with CV. And there is more than 10 different payment processors that's currently, uh, in, that are currently integrated in CVCRM. Uh, you will be able to create your own event registration page. So through the page, your uh, constituents will be able to uh, register to your event. Uh, 
and they will be recorded as an event participant in the CDCM. If the contact is not already in the database, then the contact will be created and then the event registration will be recorded as well as an attribute of the contact. Then when people register, you can set up CVCM to generate a re automatic registration confirmation and receipt. And then after the event, you have uh, many different ways to uh, send thank you notes. And these thank you notes can be sent out automatically. So you don't have to remember and worry about, oh, uh, I, need to, uh, don't to, I need to not forget to send the thank you notes. It can be configured that automatically the day after the event, the thank you note is sent out to all the event participants. And when you configure your event uh, registration, it can be non-paid event, but it can be also paid event. And sometimes you have events with very complex uh, fee structure. And so there is a tool what we call price set that it's used to uh, to uh, uh, just to set up these fee structures when you have different options. And also you can use CV discount. Uh, CV discount is an extension that is part available to the community. So if you want to include discount, and it can be discount to, that you are offering to your members, for example. And then, of course, you uh, all these uh, people who are going to register to the event, they're going to become a, even participants, so you will be able to uh, have access to a list of participants and then you will be able to print this list and also to print name badges. Uh, so that's a few, we're not going to go in detail of each module, but that's some uh, major examples of what you can do with the module. Communications. So you can manage uh, emails and mass emails, so a bulk email. So you can either send just an email to a contact or to a group of contact, or you can also uh, send a mass emailing directly from CVCIM. So to do so, you're going to organize your contact in mailing list. So you're going to use the group feature of CVCM, and this group of contacts are going to become your mailing list for your emailing communication. Then you have access into a you have access to a, a tool that will that will help you to uh, be able to compose the email and save it as a template. So you don't need to, for example, you are building a newsletter you're going to save your newsletter in a template, so each month you will be able to edit the template and just change the content and save it as another um, emailing and send it to, to the, from the CVCM to your constituents. Uh, also, you can have uh, you can build a subscription page so people can subscribe to your mailing list, and they will be able to have options to select which mailing list they want to to subscribe to. And of course, in each emailing, you you will include a footer when you have links that will allow people to unsubscribe to your mailing list or to your or opt out to all your mailings. Then because of the integ because CV, that's we're talking about CV mail, because CV mail is part of the core of CVCM, all the activities about this um, emailing will be saved and uh, saved and related to your contact. So you will know who has opened the emails, who clicked on specific uh, link, who has forwarded this email. So you will be able to track all the uh, recipient activities of this emailing. Volunteer management. Volunteer management, uh, as I said earlier, one of your type of constituent can be a volunteer. So you will be able to have, for example, to build a volunteer application that you will post on your website to recruit volunteers. In this volunteer application, you can include custom field that are that information that you would like to know about your volunteers. What are their skills? What are their past experience? When are they available? 
during the day, in the evening. So this will be tracked as custom data in, in the CVCM, and they will be, uh, you will be able to collect uh, values for this field through uh, online volunteer application. Then you will be able also to segment your volunteers, and it can be by any criteria of your choice. So, example, qualification, skills. And then you will be able to match these skills with needs. So they, uh, there is an extension that's named CV Volunteer. It's a very powerful extension that's going to extend the out-of-the-box uh, capabilities of volunteer management with CVCIM. So with CV Volunteer, you will be able to uh, define the roles, which kind of roles do you need, and and also define some time slot that you want your volunteer to sign up, so for a specific event, and they will be able to um, sign up as a volunteer from the front end of your website, and they will be able to select which role they want to have for the event and which time uh, time slot they want to, to work at the event. And so this is what we call the self-serve volunteer registration. And then uh, from you, you will have one event page, but two different sign-up, one for your regular attendees and one for your volunteers. And then you, after that, you will be able uh, to also log the volunteer hours. After the event, you will be able also to uh, actually log that the volunteer hours have been worked or not. And then you can do a lot of reporting on these uh, volunteer activities. Fundraising is, of course, at the core of CVCM. With um, uh, so you will be you are able to track and manage contributions. So it can be done uh, offline and online. So online means that you will have your donation page available on your website, and people will be able to donate to your organization and pay it online. Uh, contribution can be also pledges and recurring. So recurring, of course, you need to make sure that your payment processor that you are using support recurring. And that the recurring means that automatically on a specific interval that the donor is going to select during the uh, uh, online registration, automatically a certain amount will be uh, withdrawn from its credit card. So it can be once a month or once every two months or once a year. And the pledges is uh, when someone is going to say, I'm uh, to promise, it's a promise. So it's say, okay, I'm going to give to your organization X amount every month. And then the CDCIM will let you track these people who have pledged. An email will be sent automatically to them to remind them that they need to actually make the payment and which date. When you are, when your donors are making donations online, they will automatically receive a receipt that you can customize and personalize. But also, of course, you will be able to send out thank you notes uh, from your back end and also tax receipt. And you can also link this donation with premium gift. An additional neat uh, functionality to fundraising is that uh, you can also have your more active supporters participate in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. What does it mean? It means that they can build their own uh, pages, what we call personal campaign page, and that they will be able to raise funding on behalf of your organization. So that's a very powerful way to expand your uh, networks because your supporters are going to reach out to their own network, to their friends and colleagues and family and neighbors, and ask to uh, and ask for uh, donation uh, on behalf of your organization. So you're expanding the power of your network through these personal campaign pages. Of course, there is a lot of reporting. I didn't mention that, but uh, when you manage membership, you have a lot of uh, templates available to generate reports on membership. Same with events, 
same with contacts, volunteers. So these reports are generated from existing templates. Uh, there is more than 30 uh, templates available to you out of the box when you install CDCIM. And they are organized in different sections, so templates for events, templates for fundraising, uh, I mean for contribution, templates for events. These templates we allow to generate reports, so there is different kind of reports. Some are uh, organized and displayed in table and some are displayed more graphically with bar charts or path charts. And so you are able to personalize these reports because you can choose which column you want to include in these reports. And you want also to choose how you want to display the data in the reports. You can group uh, data by column. Also, you can include your custom fields in the report. Very important. So if you have custom data that you want to include, in the reports, that's possible as well, without any uh, programming, just uh, just uh, configuration from the back end. You can have also this report delivered to, to a specific person via email. So you can just set up that this um, report is going to be sent out the first of each month to this particular email address. Uh, just one note, if you want to add additional templates, this is absolutely possible, and if you, uh, you can, so but that will need some uh, programming in uh, in PHP. So you don't need to uh, to be familiar with API, just a PHP, and then you can add your own uh, report templates. You can also manage grants with CVCIM. Uh, so. Uh, you have either a few grants that you receive and that you want to track, or also grants that you're going to distribute. So, for example, scholarship. Uh, so there is a civic grant uh, management module that is available to you, and that will be able to let you track your grantees and also have a grant application available on your website so your grantees can submit application. And then you have some specific uh, fields that you can track regarding the status of the grant, the workflow, how much, amount, how much uh, money has been uh, requested with the grant, or uh, how much money you're going to actually distribute. So all of this is part of CV grant. Campaign management is also a core module of CVCIM. That's what we call CV campaign. So CV campaign allows you to build advocacy campaign by uh, regrouping uh, different activities in your CVCM together under one umbrella. So for example, you're doing a membership, uh, membership drive campaign. So what are you going to do? First, you're going to create your membership in a page. And then every membership that's going to be through, that going to go through this page will be linked on, with the campaign. And then uh, you're going to send out an emailing to uh, to uh, reach out to your potential members or current members to encourage and to renew their membership. So this emailing will be linked also to the campaign. And then maybe, for example, you're going to organize an event, so going to present the benefits. So this is what we, everything that we are going to be linked under a campaign, so it will be easy to do some search. You can set up a financial goal to your campaign, and then you will be able to track how the progress of your campaign towards your financial goal. Part of CD campaign is also uh, capabilities of doing uh, surveys and uh, petitions. So petitions are used a lot for what we call online surveys, so when you want to get some feedback from your constituents. And so, but also petitions are used by political organization. And surveys are more used by when you're doing door-to-door -door canvas or on the phone. So you have a list of questions and you have volunteers that go through these questions and then you're going to recall the answers to these questions into CVCIM. Case management. So case management is another core module of CVCIM. 
it's um, it's going to be really used when you go to you want to track some more complex sequence of interactions and so when you have to follow up a specific workflow or a specific timeline and so uh, the civic case management was initially uh, when you had to set up all the, the process and the workflow, you had to go into uh, XML5, uh, but that's, there is a huge effort that has been done uh, with the 4.6 of CVCRM, and so all the configuration and the customization of case management can be done now through the user interface, which is a huge, uh, it's huge, so very powerful uh, module as well. Integration. So, of course, I mentioned that that a very important part of CVCM is the capability to be to integrate with external applications. So, we talk about payment processors, but it can be, and we talk about websites. But there is a lot of different integration that are available to you um, through extensions. Uh, for most of the part. Uh, integration with accounting it is part of the core of CVCIM. So you can integrate CVCIM with your accounting software. It can be QuickBooks, of course, but it can, it can be another accounting software as long as this software supports import of CSV file, uh, which most, <laughs> most of them. And that it can be integration with external applications such as uh, emailing uh, applications. So currently you have integration with MailChimp, Constant Contact, and Campaign Manager. So the benefit of the integration is to uh, add additional capabilities or because you want, to, for any reason, you want to keep these other applications and then uh, you want to be able to uh, synchronize the contacts between CBCM and, and these other applications. So this is the end for the actual features and capabilities of CBCM. Before we end, I wanted just to give you a few uh, more uh, input about how to start and how to manage this project. So, that's what you need to think when you're going to start using CVCM. So the first step will be the implementation. So installation on a server, or if you decide, you can go with hosting, uh, hosting uh, providers, and also configuration and customization of your CVCM. So that's uh, the first step. And um, so, as I said, configuration can be. Uh, Almost everything can be done from without any programming. So what do we include in configuration? It's um, setting up uh, the contact type, the custom fields, the, the profile, but also configuration with the member, the main payment processor, with your email service. So that's all part of the configuration. So that's important that you will need uh, someone in your organization to lead this project. And CDCM is going to become in the core of your organization. So you really need someone to be to take the lead on this project and, and go to step from, from step to a, another. After the configuration, then you will have to proceed with the, your existing data migration. So these data are going to come from different sources. Uh, it, as I said, uh, as I presented in my first slide, it can come from Outlook, from Excel, or from another uh, system. So you will have a work to, before actually importing this data in CVCN, you will need, you will have a work to clean up this data, to regroup this data, and to make them ready to be imported. So that's a very key part of the implementation process and it's usually taking more time than you expected always always it's um, and sometimes it's uh, uh, can be complex it depends on which kind of data but we everything can be imported in CVCM it's not just a list of contacts but you can import your list of donations that you received and that are living in another database 
or you can import the list of event participation or registration that currently live in your uh, event uh, application. So, but don't really keep in mind that there is a time uh, that you will need to dedicate to prepare the data before import. Also, you will have to set up backups. Very, of course, key that all your database and uh, will need to be backup. So that's a key part of uh, the process. And then after when CVCM is going to be up and running, you will need to think about upgrade. It's very important to regularly upgrade CVCM. And so uh, it's not only to benefit of the new features, but also because of security. Uh, there is a, a lot of security upgrades that needs to be uh, proceed. Yes, yeah, so very important. So to think about uh, setting up some process and who is going to take care of the upgrades. Because if you don't upgrade your CVCM, uh, and it's not only because you're not going to benefit of the new wonderful functionalities, but also but you might become your CVCM might become a, a breach, security breach, and also because CVCM is part of your website, you will also need to uh, be aware that you will need to upgrade your CMS as well. And then training, training is important so you can learn how to use CVCM. As you can see, there was a, a lot, a lot to, uh, to do. You can do a lot with CV. And this is just one slide. So this is all the resources that's available to you if you will find, look for information. Uh, of course, you can start with uh, cvcim.org website. There is a blog when you can read a lot about case studies, forum, wiki. Uh, online books are available. So when you are in your uh, CVCM navigation menu, you can uh, go to help and have access to uh, the online books. And there is a lot, also a lot of videos available to you uh, as well so you can learn about CVCM. Thank you. So um, I'm going to, uh, if you have more time, you still, if you are still with us, um, uh, you, I will be happy to answer questions. You are now unmuted. Hello? Okay, so hello. I have a, do you want to ask me a question? I have a question from Audrey. Uh, she was asking me if uh, they are not using uh, uh, Drupal, WordPress, or Joomla CMS, and mm -hmm. they can still use CVCIM. And I say yes, there is, um, there is um, a standalone uh, version of CVCIM that you can use, that it's completely independent of the CMS. And I will be happy to uh, provide with more information about the standalone version. And the idea is that it uh, runs on a completely separate. And then the way that the public pages are going to be available to you um, will be um, uh, will be through link. So you will post link on your website and when your contact will click on the link, they will be able to access the sign up, a membership sign up page or event registration page. Do you have another question for, for me? No? I hope that you enjoy the uh, presentation. And uh, thank you for, for your time. And I hope that uh, uh, you will be, uh, uh, you'll be able to um, uh, use CVCIM. On, uh, and so that will be a, a if you wonderful um, asset for your organization. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.